Once Upon a Die. Hello everybody! Hello, 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 and welcome to Once Upon a Die. Uh, my name is DA Xavier, and this is a stream all about solitaire board games uh, and RPGs, but today board games. Um, thank you for joining me this Thursday afternoon, uh, or evening if you happen to be watching from Europe, or I can't do the math if you're watching from Australia. I guess that would be Friday morning. Um, hello, Jen. Nice to see you. Um, thank you for coming along and joining me today. Um, today, we are going to be playing through a game that I've known about for a while, uh, and I'm very, very, very grateful to have had the opportunity to actually uh, stream this for you in the way that I'm doing it, because I've been planning this stream for quite a long time. Uh, but the... Uh, the, the um, the quality of the product that I'm going to show you is much higher than it was when I first actually came up with the idea for this stream. Um, sorry, literally while my intro music was playing, I managed to put a fingerprint on my glasses. Uh, not helpful. Um, anyway, uh, yes, so this uh, game is a game called Under Falling Skies. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard about this one. It's not actually available in North America as of yet, uh, It's I, or at least I don't believe it is. Uh, it might be in the US, I suppose. Um, Canada, I checked a couple of the local stores in Toronto and it's still listed as upcoming. Um, but this is a game uh, that is coming out in Q4, so if it's not available right now, uh, then it will be very, very shortly. Um, and this game began life, and I'm going to talk for a moment about the history of this game. Not much about it, because there's actually a really compelling means of finding out. You can read about it yourself. Uh, and in actual fact, I'm going to post uh, in a little bit. I'll post a link in my Twitch chat. Um, sorry to those of you watching on YouTube. I'll put it in the comments down below. But the designer of this game, Thomas Ullier... I apologize for that pronunciation if it is wrong, uh, actually has been posting a designer diary on a, as, as like blog entries on um, BoardGameGeek, and it's very compelling to read, so I recommend you go and check that out at a later point. Um, but uh, Under Falling Skies was originally designed as a nine-card print-and-play game, which was part of the Board Game Geek nine card print and play contest. Now, if you're not familiar with Board Game Geek, for one, go and familiarize yourself. If you're interested in board games, you should know about this website. Um, its utility is kind of varied depending on what you want to do. It allows you to track a lot of stats of games you've played and things like that. And in actual fact, there's an app uh, called BG Stats that stores a lot more statistics than Board Game Geek does, but fundamentally updates Board Game Geek with games that you've played and things like that. Um, I love it. I'm obsessed with stats regarding my board games. Um, but it also has a catalogue of all the board games people have put in there. Forums, pictures, videos, links to everything. My, any, most of my content that's on YouTube, I've linked to the appropriate game uh, or games on Board Game Geek. Um, but it also has uh, these forums where Tomas has posted his designer diaries. And it has contests. There are tons of contests. I... I really only realized recently exactly how many they were there were excuse me when i was sort of researching games to play during quarantine um there's a solitaire design contest which i knew about there's a print and play contest there's i think there's a roll and write contest um there's a plethora of these things and one of them is a print and play contest for a game that only involves nine cards and that spawned a game called under falling skies uh, Tomas designed this uh, in 2019. Um, the picture of his his artwork there um, will, I'm certain, uh, evoke a degree of Space Invaders, and it is no surprise whatsoever that that is kind of an overarching theme for this game. It is very Space Invaders-y, um, and that will kind of give you an idea of what's coming. Um, but that was an absolutely fantastic game. I played it back in May of this year when I was starting to troll for solitaire print and plays. Um, and uh, I was prepping to do a stream uh, of this game when I found out that it was about to be published by Czech Games Edition. Um, Jen says I'm getting Independence Day vibes from the cover. Yep, that too. Um, you're playing, it's like you're playing Space Invaders, but Independence Day is the ultimate result. Uh, if that makes sense. I mean, I guess Independence Day is kind of Space Invaders as well. Um, but the idea of this game is very, very simple. You have a base, uh, and you are defending that base from the incoming alien invasion, trying to research enough information about the aliens to stop them before their mothership descends to a level where, you know, it's bye-bye base, basically. Um, and you do that with dice in a worker placement mechanism, and it's really cool. Uh, and I played this um, 
this solo game and lost horribly because, you know, it's a challenge and that's kind of what happens the first time you play one of these. And thought, well, this is really good. I like it. Let's let's get this on the stream. And then, I, as I say, I found out that Czech Games Edition was going to be publishing it. And um, Czech, I have, would like to express my thanks right now to Czech Games Edition because they actually sent me uh, a copy of this game to demonstrate for you today. Uh, and so instead of looking like that now, it now looks like... Oops. This. That is the new box cover, the Czech Games Edition published version of Under Falling Skies, due to your stores very shortly if it isn't there already. Um, I, I, spoiler alert, I really enjoy this game. Of course I do. I really enjoy everything I put on my channel. Um, you know, I do, I do get games from companies, and I will always put them up, but I haven't yet actually received something I haven't enjoyed playing, so that kind of works for me. Um, I will still put content up if it's not something I fully enjoy, and I will talk about it in that sense, but uh, this one I really have a great time with. Uh, it's a solitaire-only game. Now, one thing that interests me about this is that the printed box actually says one plus. Uh, for the player count, which makes me think, you know, you could discuss as a team what to do, but ultimately it's a single person's um, uh, manipulating things, and it would ultimately be a bunch of people, be like sitting around playing a video game together where one person's controlling it and everyone else is pitching in ideas. That would kind of, to my mind, would be what the plus would equate to. Um, but this is fundamentally a solitaire-only game. Uh, I haven't had too many of those on this channel, um, because I tend to do things that have solitaire options and variants and things like that. Uh, but I'm hoping to do a few more, because there are plenty out there that are very, very good. And this is one. So without further ado, I am going to get rid of the box cover, and I am going to shrink myself down. When I can select the correct window in OBS, there we go. And here we go, here is Under Falling Skies. Um, now, Check Games Edition did something very clever with this, and um, basically I can sum it up by saying I'm not going to be playing this copy of Under Falling Skies. I'm going to be playing this copy of Under Falling Skies. <laughs> um, at face value there's no difference, but this is a demo copy. Um, the reason for this is that this game also includes a sort of story-oriented campaign mode that brings more components and things like that into the game as you play. And smartly, of course, Check Games Edition did not want to give too much of this away in advance of the game coming out. Um, so to all of us media who have received copies of this game, they have given us a copy of the full game so that we can experience it, but they have also given us a copy, a demo copy of the game. And what's happened in this is a lot of the future information is blurred out. So we can show you campaign content without spoiling it. Uh, and I think that's a really smart move. Um, we'll get to the campaign in a bit. I'm going to play one base game, and then I'm going to play campaign game one. I have not touched the campaign yet. I've looked at the rules to, to see how, you know, make sure I understand them. And in actual fact, one thing I think is very cool uh, is there was sort of, if I re recall correctly, there was an, it was an advanced rule in the print and play copy, which is actually a rule that kind of comes in uh, at, once you've played the, your first game. Um, they don't introduce it till later, and I think that makes a great deal of sense, because it just adds a little bit more complexity to the game. Um, but that will be coming in with uh, campaign game one. Um, so this is the demo copy of the game, and what's um, their, their suggestion, which I think is absolutely lovely, because we have been given a full copy of the game as well, um, the, the, the media will donate copies to local game cafes and things like that, so I will be donating this copy for people to try out uh, prior to uh, uh, buying the game, so your local game store may well have a copy of this if one of your local reviewers has done a review of the game, and it will give you an opportunity to look at it without spoiling the game for yourself, but to be able to try out all the mechanisms and get a feel for what it's all about. So, with all that chat over, let's open this box and see what's in here. Um, see, even here, wait, this is a demo copy. There's a bunch of stuff blurred out. You'll see what that amounts to in a bit. Um, I didn't open this box because I also wanted to show you a little bit about what's in the box. Uh, I don't normally do unboxings per se, but I think the way that they've done this is really, really cool. So everything I have just pulled out is for the base game except for a few components in the Ziplocs, which are for later. Uh, they don't have a means of storing components you're not supposed to use yet. Um, so the blue dice and the orange ship that's in here uh, do not come into play in the base game. But then under all of that, this, what's left in here, is your campaign. So on the top here we have the campaign booklet where you can write down your achievements and, and what goes on. And then in here we have four different 
campaign uh, chapters, chapter four, chapter three, chapter two, and chapter one. They said uh, on average a campaign will probably take 10 games. Um, and you, it's infinitely replayable, essentially, because and you'll see why when we get to that, but you kind of vary it up. But you can see here, that would be a comic strip in the proper version of the game, but it's been blurred out for us so that I can show you this without giving anything away. Which is also nice, because it means I can demo it right now, and I, this doesn't have to be game one of my campaign, I can just kind of show it off. Uh, probably a good thing, because it's hard to get everything correct while you're also concentrating on narrating, uh, and I would likely not do as well. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but that, that's what's in this. So I'm going to put that to one side. I'm going to leave this, and we'll come on to that in a bit. Uh, this is um, uh, part one of the campaign. I'm going to tuck that to one side. And this is our base game. So I'm going to just get the components out. I'll leave the ones we're not going to use just yet. Um, and then we'll go from there. The components in this, by the way, are really, really nice. Um, good, solid wooden dice. This little uh, excavator guy, little, little, little excavator truck. You'll see about him later. But then they have these beautiful plastic... Focus on me. There we go. These beautiful little plastic Space Invader ships. Um... There are five that are this purpley color, four that are the uh, the white here, and then the one orange one, which we're not using right yet. Um, yes, the excavator is so cute. You are absolutely correct. <laughs> then we have um, these punch boards, uh, and these represent our base, and the skies above our base. Uh, and I'm going to do something I haven't done yet, which is play at a slightly more complicated level than I've played at so far. But you can see here, if we lay this all out, and I'm hoping that my uh, ring light is not going to massively um, uh, blare these. No, that's pretty good, actually. Um, you can see here we've got space coming all the way down to um, uh, ground level down here. Uh, and the, these sort of sit out in this level. Now, this is base difficulty. And you can tell that because all the numbers down the left hand side are green. This is uh, threat level zero. Uh, there isn't really much of a threat going on right now. Um, you can play this at more complicated threat levels, which is what I'm about to do. And in order to do that, from threat levels one to four, you randomly determine one of these tiles and flip it. And you will get a slightly more difficult side of the board. Now I have only ever played this at threat level zero. I'm about to play this at threat level one. Goodness only knows what's going to happen. I'm not going to turn over this, because this is the final... This this would, this would tile equates to the final boss, uh, and I don't feel like making the final boss more difficult um, for the first time I try this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a die. One or two, this one flips. Three or four, this one flips. Five or six, this one flips. Um, that's a two, so I'm going to flip this guy. And you'll see now that the numbers are kind of spattered in... I'm not sure if that's it's a combination of technology and alien goop, I think. Uh, and this indicates that I've now flipped this over to a more difficult side. Um, things are going to be harder on here. There's going to be more bad results. Uh, the good results are going to be more difficult to achieve, that kind of thing. So, this is our night sky. Now, I can already tell, I wasn't quite sure how this was going to play out, but I can already tell I'm going to have to play this game at a slight angle. Because if I do that, this entire tile is off screen and I've still got to fit one of these in there somewhere. So we're going to be playing on a little bit of an angle, I hope you'll bear with me on that. Um, but not being able to put up a portrait video very easily, I think it's the best way of doing it. Um, but obviously you can tell uh, things descend down towards you. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to play, I'm hoping, if I just get my keyboard over here, and I'll move my socials over there as well, so that A, you can still see them, and B, they're not in the way. There we go. I'm hoping what I can do is play at this kind of an angle, so you get a little bit of the descent feeling without losing um, any of the information because it's two sideways. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Uh, I was trying to work out if there's a means in my current setup uh, of doing this without doing that, and simply I can't. Unfortunately, the way that my setup exists, I'm not going to be able to do that. On top of this guy, we are going to put this, the mothership. Um, this is at the top of our skies, and is going to descend slowly down towards us uh, as the game plays out. Um, we then have to choose which city we are defending. Um, 
uh, there are three cities that come as like a base, you know, you get to start playing the game. Uh, New York, Washington, and Roswell. Roswell is the starting point. Um, that's the one they recommend you play for your first game, so naturally I'm not going to play with it right now. Um, these are double-sided, by the way. They have red on the back as well, uh, at the blue side and the red side. Uh, that's when you're playing, if you're playing, what you can do is you can play where the city is uh, completely safe and under threat, and then if you lose a game, you flip your tile over and you play with the back side of it, and the city is defending itself much more vigorously because now they understand that there's an alien threat because, you know, we know how alien films go. Nobody believes it's real. Um, they understand that there's now an alien threat and you get a player power that is... Well, for Roswell, you get a player power. For the other two cities, they already have player powers and that power gets stronger when you flip it over. So... Um, uh, 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 I'm going to play with Washington, D.C., um, and the reason I'm going to do that is that New York uses uh, one of the more advanced components that I'm not going to bring in right now. So I'll put Washington here at the bottom, so that is our final uh, element of above ground, and then underground we have our base. Um, those of you who watch me play XCOM, uh, the first thing I thought as soon as I saw this game in the print-and-play version was, oh, there's an XCOM base right there! And I kind of think it would be fun to have this as, like, the denouement of an XCOM game. You play through XCOM, and if you beat the, the game there, they send their mothership, and you have to defend it in a game of Under Falling Skies. I think that would be absolutely hilarious. Um, anyway, this little thing here, uh, which I'll just show you quickly, says has a B arrow pointing up and a C arrow pointing down. And what that is telling us is that's telling us which sides of our base tiles to use. It says that uh, you are using the side of your tile where the B arrow is facing upwards, which is this way, and then the side of that tile where the C arrow is facing downwards, which is this way. And what that will do is it will tell you the layout of your base. I haven't seen this base before, this is completely fresh to me, so we'll see how this goes. I don't know how to kind of work with it. Um, and then we put out some uh, some counters. Uh, let me just talk very quickly about what you're looking at, and then everything's going to make an enormous amount more sense. Um, here on the left-hand side, this is the research track. We win if we cap this track, if we get the research token to here. Um, it starts down here, so we have all of these spaces to go up. Now, I... Hopefully you can see these fairly clearly, but there are numbers printed in each of these spaces. Uh, 6, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 4, 2, 5, 1, 3, 11. In order to move a token from one space to the next, you have to be able to produce sufficient research. So in order to go from the uh, here to the first space, I have to produce 6 research, because this is number 6. If I produce 9 research, I could actually go up 2 spaces. There is a caveat to that, and it'll make sense once I start talking about the dice. But suffice it to say, this is good. This is how we win. We cap this track. All right. Um, this track on the opposite side, of the, I will keep knocking this board, and it's terrible, terrible when you do because everything falls out of sync. Um, this side of the board is the bad side of the board. This is the mothership's progression. This is the only thing where it particularly progresses, per se, in the sense that if this orange tip here meets that space you lose, um, because the mothership has now caught up, and that's it. You get blown sky high. Um, you can tell, by the way, by this little arrow here. It's basically saying, this is a deployment grid for the bad guys, but it's saying that the mothership is at this point. So when this moves down to here, the mothership is doing this thing. All the things on the side tend to be... don't, don't tend to be, they are all bad. Um, this is the aliens interrupting you in some way, shape, or form. Uh, they could be spawning white fighters. Um, these guys come on. They don't start in the game. They get generated as the game progresses. Um, they might... Uh, sit, you might have a setback with excavating your base, and that'll, again, make sense in a minute. Um, or they might remove some of your research, and that's particularly bad. Uh, removing research in this game is terrible because you have to make all that space back up again, and the hardest thing to do is to get to the top of this track. Um, every turn the mothership moves down at least one space. Possibly two, depending on how things progress. Um, possibly more, actually, but if it goes down more, you're A, not playing terribly well, and B, screwed. Um, 
Then here, this is going to be where all the little fighters come down and the different symbols on here determine what they do. That will make more sense once I place fighters out onto the board. And then down here we have the base. Uh, and actually I can show you... Oh, they do use bots in this. Uh, you know what then, for ease, I'm, I tell a complete lie. I just realized for ease I'm going to play Roswell because Roswell means I can introduce one element of this game a little bit later, and I would prefer to do that. So I'm going to do AB, which is the base, uh, the standard base. I didn't look at that before I uh, stated I was going to use one of the different... I've tried to sort of look at as little of this, uh, enough of this to understand the game, but as little of it as possible so that you're kind of experiencing it with me, because that seems to be kind of the, the gist of, of what CGU was trying to do with this demo copy, and I, I would like to honor that. So, this is going to be our base. Um, there's one type of room in the Washington base that I wasn't intending on using for this game, which is why I've swapped out. Um, just two tracks, I'll just show you while the base is still assembled. This track on the left here is energy. Uh, we expend energy to do stuff, uh, and this shows how much we have. Lower is good. This me down the bottom here is more, excuse me, more energy. This is the damage track, and lower is bad. As aliens attack us, our damage goes down. If the damage token ever reaches this spot here, where the skull is, the base has been destroyed, and we lose the game. Um, if I show you this up close, these are the different rooms available. You can kind of see that they're delineated by orange, green, yellow, and grey. Uh, and we place our dice there. We're going to roll the dice and place them as workers in a worker placement game. So I could place a die here, for example, and I would get to do that thing. Um, the... Uh, you can see, obviously, each room is the size of a die, but there are some that are connected. We have, uh, for example, this orange room here and the yellow room over here. Uh, you need to fill both sides of that room to use it. Uh, and basically what happens is this. The orange rooms launch fighters, and they launch fighters to go and attack the alien craft, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, if you look at the orange room in the middle on the left, you'll see a little lightning bolt symbol and a minus one. Uh, there's two things involved in that. What that means is you need to expend one energy to activate that room, and it will have an effective strength one lower than the dice that you place in there. So if I put a five, my fighters will launch with strength four. That will make sense in a minute. The green next to it is research. Um, I put a die in there, and I complete research, and that helps me to uh, obviously win the game, because that's my goal. The yellow rooms are producing energy. When you do that, you gain energy. Uh, so you can see bottom left there, you simply place one die and get that much energy. But on the middle, on the right, you place two dice, but then subtract three from their total. Um, hopefully that all makes sense. Any questions, throw them in chat. Um, but that should give you an idea of what's going on. Uh, the top there, uh, those are anti-aircraft guns. Now, anti-aircraft guns in this game are incapable of shooting down fighters. Um, they're just throwing up a flak screen. But you'll notice at the top there, it's got a minus one, but it's got a minus one over the shape of an alien ship. Now, the reason for that is very, very simple. We're going to start the game with five alien ships on the uh, in the mothership, ready to be deployed. If I take a three, and I place it here to start filling up the fighters, I'm going to look... I'm going to place one die per column of the board. Five dice total. Let, um, one, and I can place them in any order, I don't have to go left to right, I don't have to go top to bottom, I put them wherever I'm comfortable with, but only one die per column. When The second that I place that die, the any um, alien fighters in that column descend by the number on the die. So this fighter would descend one, two, three squares on this board, and it's coming down to attack me. If I place that on an AA gun, it moves one fewer spaces. Right? That's what the minus one on the alien ship moves means. Uh, the AA guns are throwing up flak. The aliens are a little bit slower to respond to that, so they don't come down as quickly. You don't get anything for that happening, except it allows you to strategically place where the aliens descend to. And this is one of the coolest bits of this game for me. Um, here's how these symbols work that are on the board. First of all, this white... Uh, here, let me pick one of these up that's got everything on it. They all have everything on it. Um, up here, this little white symbol means the mothership moves down. The second an alien lands on that spot, the mothership descends one row. Now, obviously that's bad because it's shortening the time limit on your game, but it's good because 
the um, the mothership effect that is going to come into to, to effect that turn only happens at the end of the round, and the mothership is going to descend one space prior to that happening. So if I do nothing this round, at the end of it, the mothership will descend by one and add a white ship. Now, if there's something diabolical coming up, like removing two levels of research, and the mothership is here, I can make one of the aliens hit that, descend the mothership a level, and then it will descend again before it triggers the effect, which means I'll just spawn two white ships instead, and this research reduction will have been skipped. So, while it does shorten your game, used strategically, it can give you quite a substantial advantage over the crap that would have come your way had you not done so. Um, the arrows, there's pink left-hand arrows and blue right-hand arrows. If a ship, like here, for example, this landed on a right-hand arrow, if it stops there, it immediately shifts across to the next column in that direction. If it can. And if you don't want that to happen, then what you want to do is time that movement when there's a ship already there. Because it doesn't push everything across. If there's a ship already there, nothing happens. It lands on that arrow and doesn't go anywhere. So you can kind of decide whether or not you want that to be a risk that you want to take. And finally, these explosions. And you can see uh, all the explosions have a number underneath them. That is the strength required for your fighters to defeat an alien that is on that spot. So you want an alien to end up there on a turn you're going to launch fighters. And if the alien lands, so for example uh, here, we have a two. If an alien lands on that spot and I launch fighters that turn, my fighters, the die value of my fighter spaces has to equal two or higher. Uh, this is a one. This is really easy. You ca if, as long as you launch fighters, something here gets blown up. Unless you, I think, ooh, that's an interesting question. Can you get zero strength fighters if you launch them on a one and there's a minus one? I don't know if there's a, a minimum. I've never actually tried doing that because I kind of feel it's a bit foolish. Um, but I just thought, I wonder, um, plus or minus the room's modifier does not affect them. But yeah, uh, that's that, that's that. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it does not say that it cannot be reduced to zero. So I would assume, therefore, that you can reduce that value to zero, uh, which obviously you would not want to do. There would be no point. Um, but as long as your fighters have any strength, they will blow something up on there. Conversely, this is a six. I have to have fighter strength six, or the thing that's on here survives. But the nice thing is, it's not one column that gets blown up. When you launch fighters, every single alien ship on this entire board that is on a space that is viable to be attacked will get destroyed. So you can wipe the board if you're really lucky. Very difficult to do, but you could do it. Um, that's all the things that are up here. Um, the difference between the pink and the white fighters, firstly, the pink ones, are the, or the purple ones, are the only ones that start in the game. The mothership has to generate the rest. Uh, secondly, the white ships, when they get destroyed, they get taken off the board, and the mothership has to regenerate them if it wants to launch them again. The pink ones, when they get destroyed, they just go back to the mothership, and they will respawn that following turn. Um, the last element that we can see right now that I haven't discussed is the little excavator, which starts right here. I can place a die. I can only use rooms. Let me start this way. I can only use rooms starting here and um, snaking down to where the excavator is. And I cannot use a room that the excavator is currently in, which means right now there are four levels of my base I can't reach. However, let's say I have a six, for example. I could place a six here. Um, no, I couldn't, but I could place it here. And rather than using this room, I would expend that die to move the excavator forward a number of spaces up to the number on the die. And you can't place the die, like I couldn't put the six here. Um, or better example, I couldn't put a four there because you have to move the excavator to where the die is. And that would be one, two, three, four, five spaces. You'll notice there are spaces where there is no room you still have to excavate through them. But once you've excavated all those rooms, in the following turns, you can then use them to fight back. So you're increasing the size of your base. Uh, and the rooms fill in automatically. You don't have to build them separately. The excavator uh, just kind of builds them as it goes. It's like the road layer in Thunderbirds. I don't know if any of you remember that. Uh, there was this wonderful device that I thought was absolutely marvelous in Thunderbirds. Um, 
that would drive through a mountain and it would chomp up all the rocks in front of it, swallow them all up, and as it moved down, it would leave behind a fully formed road with the lines painted and everything. Um, you know, tarmac laid. It was it, such a fantastic idea. That's basically what this excavator does. It just churns through, it chews up all the earth and spits out rooms behind it. Um, but once you've built a room, you can... Um, you can use it. When you hit these points on the, the alien boards, the excavator has to move back that many spaces and any rooms that it backs over essentially get chewed back up again and you can't use them until you've re-excavated them. It cannot, however, ever go past its starting space. You have to have one of each room permanently available during the game, so I can't move it back to there. If I'm here and I have to move the excavator back three spaces, it doesn't move. Um, <clears throat> so that's how that works. Um, the last thing is, I'm going to roll the dice, and then I get to place them all out. The moment I place a white die, I have to take everything I haven't placed and re-roll it again. Alright, so then I could maybe place this over here, and then if I place this here, I take these two and I re-roll them. So you only earn re-rolls in this game by placing the white dice. So if you like all the numbers that are here, you have to place those dice first and save the white dice till the end. But you will always re-roll at least one die, because even if I place all three of these, like so, for example, then I'm going to place this, and I'm going to have to re-roll this die. So the, the five numbers you roll at the beginning, you are going to be able to use a maximum of four of them. Okay? And if you don't like any of them, you have to use one in order to actually earn that re-roll. You can't just roll and go, yeah, I don't like that, and roll again. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the game. So I'm going to place a damage marker here, I'm going to place an energy marker here on two, I start with two energy, and I'm going to place the research marker down at the bottom here, and let's see, oh, and let's arm the ships. And then let's see how this goes. So the ships go here, 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 and here. Alright, hopefully that all made sense. If anyone has any questions, throw them in the chat, um, and we'll see how it goes. But, the first thing that's going to happen every round, I roll the dice. I don't have my dice tray on me today, by the way. Um, so, I'm going to say if a die rolls off screen, it doesn't count. Uh, normally I do, it has to roll into the dice tray, but because this game doesn't take up, a, it takes up space vertically, but it doesn't take up a lot of the table. I'm going to keep that as my rule. So here's my starting roll. Oh, the, one other piece of strategy that I meant to mention before I started. Sixes are an interesting blend, because six lets me do something really powerful, like do tons of research. But it means that those ships are going to move down way quicker, because they're going to move six spaces. And one thing I didn't mention, if I put a six in a room that has a minus one, I only get strength of five, that still moves six. So the minus one only applies to what you get to do. It doesn't apply to the movement of the aliens. So sixes are great, because I'm doing something super good, but I'm also inviting aliens to come down faster. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. Um, now, here's where I'm at. I can produce energy. I can... Um, do that thing. Research. I can launch fighters. I can obviously use the AA guns to slow down the aliens. Um, or I can excavate. Those are my five options. Um, this six, I kind of would like to... There's no point putting a six into research right now. Uh, right, that's the last thing I needed to discuss. When I move up the research track, I move up one room at a time. So if I've got a six and a two, that's eight. Now the first four numbers are three, one, three, one. So I could move up 8, couldn't I? No, I couldn't. Because I would expend the 6, and I would move up 3 and 1, which is 4, but then you add another 3, it's 7. But 6 doesn't equal 7, so I have to stop at the 1, and then I can't use the 2 at all, because I can't get 3. Right? So it's one room at a time. Um, so that's a fairly important way to think about how you're kind of placing these dice as well. So I don't have any real interest in putting a 6 in the research room right now, because if I do that, I'm not actually going to be able to use all of it. I'm, going to, I'm only going to get to use four. However, if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, if I don't research this first turn, I can actually excavate a very powerful attack room and another research room. So I'm going to have more options for research. In fact, two more research rooms. This one doesn't even cost any, any energy to use. And as a rule, the lower you get, the more powerful the room becomes. Kind of makes sense, right? Um, but I'm, uh, yeah, I, I want to excavate fast. My biggest failing in this game is I don't excavate fast enough, and I'm not able to generate sufficient research 
while also fighting off what's going on because I have too few uh, research options. So I'm going to excavate uh, a level of six. That's going to invite this alien here to move one, two, three, four, five, six. And unfortunately, what that means is because I've done a very powerful action on turn one, this mothership is already moving down a space. Now this seems absurd, but I'm kind of interested in a way in making it move down another space because my next, the, if I let it go, the next thing it's going to do is move the um, uh, excavator back two spaces, so it'll undo the work that I just did. Um, I don't know if I'm interested in that. We'll see. I also didn't mention as soon as a ship, as soon as you place a die, the ship moves. As soon as a ship lands on a space, the action happens. You don't do anything with the base itself until everything has been placed. I didn't actually mention that. Moving the excavator costs one energy, which is represented here. You can see there on the excavator the little energy symbol. So I am going to have to expend one energy to do that. Now, what else do I want to do? Um, I could try and launch fighters this round, but if I'm going to do that, I need to roll some pretty good numbers, I would think. Uh, I could research three. Researching three would be quite nice because it just gives me that first research space and I'm not wasting energy trying to do more. But I couldn't actually research because that column has already been used, right? And that's what I have to think about. So what I think I'm going to do instead is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to generate some energy, because I'm going to need energy. Uh, I'm going to take this three, and I'm going to place it here. So one, two, three. And nothing happens, because that space is empty. But because I placed a white die, I have to re-roll the other three. That's not what I wanted. However, what I can do is... I'm not going to launch fighters this turn, uh, because nothing's going to be on a space that I can actually attack comfortably. Oh, no, it might be. No, unlikely. So I'm actually going to place uh, a one here, and because the AA guns are under it, that ship doesn't move. Because it, remember, the AA gun re reduces ship movement by one. Um, I am going to do the same here, so that ship doesn't move. And then I'm going to place the Five. Do am I going to do that? Hmm. I'm not going to do that. This is I'm. I'm taking a massive risk right out of the gate. I'm actually going to place a five here. I'm launching fighters. I don't know if that's a good idea, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down to here and bring that mothership down one more space. I've just taken two turns off my game by letting the mothership move down that far, but I've also ensured that that first turn excavation is not going to get backed up on me. Is that a good idea? Don't know. We'll see. But because I placed a white die, I re-roll this. That becomes a two. Um, I'm going to place the two here. This moves down two spaces. And the key reason I was not interested in placing a 5 here is the 5 would have put the ship on this space, and then I'd have had to get it all the way down here before I could blow it up, and this is a 6. And then down here for a 4, and then if I missed those two, then that ship's coming down to attack me. As it stands, yes, I've dropped it on an explosion. In fact, I'm going to destroy it, because this is going to be a 4. But even if I hadn't, there's another one two below. But the way it's worked out, this has actually worked out quite nicely. So, the ships have moved, their effects have happened, now we come down to my base and we resolve everything that happened, and I can resolve in any order I want. This die is useless because it's done its job, it's stopped that thing moving. That's fine. It's also worth noting, if the mothership descends onto a le- well, I guess I'll come onto that in a minute. Uh, but if it descends on top of other ships, it swallows them back up and regurgitates them out the next round. Um, here, I have five in this energy room, and it's got a minus three, which means I'm generating two energy. It's not a lot, but it gives me something to go with. I'm then going to use one energy here to move my excavator forward to this space. And now all of these rooms are available for me to use. So I just got a lot more powerful than I was. 
Then finally, I'm going to take this off. This is a five. This room has a minus one, so it counts as a four. It also uses an energy. And now any fighter that is on a four explosion gets blown up, which this guy is. He's on a four. So he goes back to the mothership. And he's going to respawn next round. Mm. Later this round. I've removed all of my dice. That's my game done. Or my turn done. The mothership now descends one space. It does that every single round without fail. And that faces it to this, which means it's going to spawn a white ship. So that comes into its thing. Now it deploys its ships. So it moves, it has its effect, and then it deploys. The, the way this works is purple ships always deploy first. And they will deploy first into an empty column. We have one of those, so it's going to come over to here. Next, the white ships deploy. Um, and the white ships and the purple ships follow the same deployment rules, other than purple goes first. Um, from then on, they are going to deploy in the column that has the lowest ship. Right? So there are no empty columns. So we look, and this is only one down, and these are three down. So one of these two columns is going to get this white ship deployed in it. And I choose which one it goes into. Because these are equal. If this was down here, it would by default go into that column. But it's not. It's equal, so I get to choose. Now, what interests me here is if I can A, launch fighters, and B, put a 1 in the left-hand column. If I deploy here, both of these ships are going to move onto explosions if I deploy a 1. I may not get a 1, but that seems to me like a really, really good benefit. In addition, if I roll 1, 2, 3, so if I roll a 4, they're also both on explosions. So I have a means of taking two ships off the board fairly easily, therefore I'm going to put it in that column. If it goes in this column, it has to get down here before I have a chance of blowing it up. I don't want that thing on the board, because the longer it's on the board, the more chance it's going to move the mothership around. And i not having that. I've already moved it quite far enough for this game. And that's it. That's the end of a round. We go back to the beginning. I roll up my dice. We do this until somebody loses. So here we go. There we go. I got my one. Interesting. I might just generate myself one energy, because one energy sounds good. These two ships both move one space down, and as long as I can send up four strength worth of fighters, they both get blown up. I have a six that I'm going to place into this research room here, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to bring that ship down a lot, but it's also not going to do any damage. Um, it's not going to move... It's not going to move the mothership down. So I think I'm interested in doing that. So this ship comes down to here. I'm going to generate five research. That's one more than I technically need. But I, do I want to get that down there without having to rely on one of these white dice becoming a five or a six when I re-roll to let me get the four research I need to get here. To launch fighters, I'm going to have to place in both of these col uh, both of these spaces here. So I'm going to put the three on one side. I need four because this is a four, um, so I need to have a total of four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, I'm going to place the four, one, two, three, here, which is going to bring this guy down four spaces, just shy of another mothership movement, which I'm grateful for. Um, and that makes me re-roll this. The nice thing is, whatever this roll is, and that did rolled off the thing, so I'm going to re-roll it, it's a one. But I've already got three here and I need four, so that's fine. I'm just going to place this here, and I'm good to go. One, two, three. I just realized I can't do everything that I've said I'm going to do. Um, this is going to move down one, and then move across to the left, because there is no ship in that, that empty space. I'm actually going to be one energy shy of what I was trying to do. I'm okay with that, um, I think. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate one energy with this die here. Um, I'm going to generate five research. I have to start generating research, otherwise I'm going to lose this game very quick. That's going to use one energy, uh, so I get three and one is four, and then another three is seven, remember, so I cannot go up to this space. I have to get up here to win this, so I need to start moving pretty quick. Now I can either blow these ships up, or I can excavate. Now, I put two dice in here. I committed to doing this. But actually, now that I've realized my energy restriction, I think I want to excavate. And the reason for that being I'm going to unlock this two energy 
research room that lets me research with two dice. And remember I said you advance with one room at a time, not one die at a time. So if I put a six and a four in here, for example, I get to go up ten on this track, which right now would get me up to here. That's a very quick advancement, and I have to be able to generate eleven in one room to be able to make this. So that's actually pretty critical. So I'm going to sacrifice my attack. I'm going to spend just the one energy, and I'm going to move my excavator to here. I don't know if that was a good move or not. Um, we'll see. Mothership's turn. It is going to move down and swallow these two ships. And so it's going to spit them back out again this round. It's going to move down. And there is no ability here, which means nothing happens, so it just respawns. Purple is going to come in here, and then this is clearly the lowest value ship, which means the white comes in behind it. There we go. Next turn. Oh, that's a horrible roll. Um, I can't get any good research off that. Uh, okay, then I'm going to bring... I also can't get any good energy generation off that either. Oh, this is nasty. Okay, what am I going to try and do? Um, I think I'm just going to put a 1 here. Because what I'm really interested in is this research space. I don't think I'm going to launch fighters this round, but I want that research space to be a good size number. And there's no point... I need to generate a ton of energy. And if I generate 3, even, then I can launch my... Um, fighters out of here and do the research in here. I'm hoping I'm going to generate more than three, which is why I'm not putting this white three out. Instead, I'm re-rolling my dice. That's more like it. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't necessarily want to launch fighters right now. Six would max out my energy, but I think I'm actually going to put a... F no, I'm not putting a five in there. That would move the mothership. Um, if anything, I want to do that next round because that would avoid me losing two levels of research. Um, then how much energy... I think I need to generate one, two, three, four, five, six. I need to generate six energy. So I'm going to put six in there. He's on an explosion, but I'm un... Well, I might launch fighters, actually. We'll see. Then I'm going to put five into the research room. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I kind of do want to launch fighters now. Um... One, two, three, four, five. If I put five in here, that's going to launch the mothership. I need three to destroy this guy, and I need four to destroy this guy. Oh, this bites. Okay, I'm going to put the five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to put the five in here, so I'm generating ten research. I'm going to bring this guy down. One, two, three, four, five. And this guy down, one, two, three, four, five. He's going to shift across. And then I have to roll this. So I don't want a three or a five. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, well, that's on me. To be fair, that would have been the pink guy anyway, so I haven't lost anything by bringing the white guy over. I'm going to place the five here. One, two, three, four, five. So he's going to get blown up, but one, two, three, four, five. The mothership moves down a level. Um, that bites. Okay, I'm going to use my six to generate six energy and cap out. Uh, this guy didn't move. I'm going to generate ten research for two energy. That's going to take me up three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can't reach twelve. So I stop there, and then I launch fighters for two energy with a value of five, which is going to blow up this guy, this guy, and this guy. So these two go back to the mothership, and this one is destroyed. Now it's the mothership's turn. It moves down a level, and I lose five research, because I've gone past that four. I was really hoping to skip that space. The flip side is, I keep my double research room. If I hadn't moved the mothership down, my excavator would have gone back three spaces, and I would have lost that room. So I'm kind of okay. The excavator now will no longer go back. I'm going to lose more research, I'm going to gain more white fighters, but the excavator is not moving back again for the rest of the game, because the mothership will never go up. It will only ever come down. 
Jen says, I'd hate to be a poor Roswell inhabitant just out for a walk in a park and then look up and see all these ships in the sky. I know! It would be pretty awful, wouldn't it? Um, okay, so I've lost my two research. These guys respawn, and they're going to respawn into the two empty columns, which is here and here. And on we go. Okay, that's a better starting roll. It's still not great. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um... Now, the one problem is, if I use my double research room right now, I am going to be attacked. Because this guy... I don't want to put a 1 in the double research room. That feels like a waste, especially when I have ground to make up now. And two more research levels to potentially be lost. At the same time... Um, if he moves more than one, he attacks Roswell, and Roswell's going to take damage. Now, if there's one thing I've learned in this game, it's that in the games I've played so far, I've been too precious about not taking damage. So I'm going to take that five, put it in there, and he comes down, he attacks me, I lose one damage, and he goes right back to the mothership. Okay? So he comes back. He's not done just because he attacked me. Um, but yeah, that's where that is. Um... So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I really want eleven, twelve. In fact, if I put right, so I put a five in there. Um, I want another five, ideally. Um, okay. So what can I do with a two, a four, or a six? Uh, I could blow him up if I move. If I put the two on the AA guns. But does blowing anything up really matter right now? One, two, three, four, five. I kind of want a five there, too. Um, the nice thing is there's an energy room down here that adds one to the die value, and there's a fighter room down here that adds one to the die value. So those are both very nice. But the key other thing I'm thinking about is this space here is a triple research room, which is going to let give me a very good chance of getting an 11. Um... Uh, an even roll of the die on three dice, I want to say is ten. Or it might be ten point five. No, I think it's eleven, actually. So that would be a median roll, whereas here I'd have to roll a five and a six to get eleven. Um, so I think I might want to consider moving this down. So one, two, three, four would land him up on top of the explosion. I think maybe I want to do that. So I'm going to put that here, one, two, three, four. That's going to give me the good energy room. I also don't get to generate energy this round, which means I'm not launching fighters if I do that, because I've only got three energy. And this is my other energy generation right now. So maybe I don't want to do that just yet. Maybe what I actually want to do is generate energy. Uh, so he's going to move down one, two, three, four. <laughs> and Roswell goes, ow. It does. Um, it would be interesting to see any multiplayer mechanics. I feel like this could be an interesting cooperative game. It could be, but as I said earlier, I feel like the cooperative element in this game is simply deciding where to place the dice, because there's not really a lot that you can do. You don't have two bases, so you are ultimately only controlling this one base. Um, okay, so let's think. What am I going to do? This guy, one, two, three, four, five, six. See, if I put the four, he's going to move into that column, and then there's a risk of him landing on a mothership. If I put the six, he's very close to attacking me. Um, I'm going to just take another hit. I'm going to put the six in the fighter room, and he's going to go one, two, three, four, bang. And Roswell's been hit again, but I'm guaranteed to blow this guy up now. I have a four and a two. Um, one, two, three. I'm going to place the four and the AA guns here, and then he's going to come down one, two, three, and he's going to get blown up as well. And now if I'm really lucky, I'm going to re-roll this into a five or a six. Those are the two numbers that would benefit me most. That's rolled off camera. That's a two. Rats. Okay. Um, that's slightly annoying. That means all I'm going to do. So I'm just going to claim those now. There's my two energy, and I get... I've, I've rolled a seven. I would need eight to get here. So all I do is move up uh, two levels. But there we go. 
Um, this guy comes off because um, he's done his job already. This one generates me one, two, three, four energy, and then I use two energy to go out with strength six ships, and these two both get blown up. And there we go. Redheaded coffee shop girl sends me the Super Meat Boy meme. That is highly appropriate right now. Uh, this game is Super Meat Boy levels of challenging sometimes. Having done that, this mothership moves down one level and spawns two white ships. Yes, you heard me right. And then this is going to spawn all of its ships back onto here. And then... It's my choice where these two white ships go. Now, I don't want to go into this column because this column has two motherships in it. So that would be a really bad idea. So I'm going to go... This one has lots of explosions. And this one has earlier explosions. So they're going to go there. All right, let's roll them up. Oh, that's a big one. So let's have a look at research. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten into research would be nice right now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's got to be the four. One, two, three, four, five, six. That could be the six. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and do ten research. Because I can't get fourteen. And then these guys come down. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they are in those positions. We're then going to do... One, two, three, four, five. I do not want a five in this column. One, two, three, four. I don't want a four in this column or a five in this column. So I want the five. Oh, but these have got two. I want a low number in this column because that's going to save me. So I'm going to put the four here. I'm going to generate four energy and re-roll these dice. Did they roll off screen? I wasn't looking. I don't think so. So I've got two sixes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six in this column would be good. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you see, my problem is if I go six down with this one, then the white ship that follows it is going to land on the mothership. So I want something less than a... I want a four or lower. So I'm going to put the six... I don't want to put it in the AA guns over here because that'll land it on the mothership. So I'm going to put it on the fighters. I may not use that room. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I didn't. I've already put a four here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I may not use the fighters. We'll see. But then I re-roll this. Low numbers. Thank you. Um, I just want to check one thing about. Um, One thing about movement of these guys. Yeah, there's actually... There's no immediate... Um, oh, the white ships don't spawn! Because the deployment spaces are full. Right, that's what happens. I'm being an idiot. So they don't spawn because there was nowhere for them to spawn. Um, there's only five deployment spaces. So yes, that solves that problem. Sorry for that. I'm confusing everybody. Um, I'm not going to have the energy. So I'm going to place this here. And this guy is just going to come down one and move across. That's what I'm going to do. I've just realized I've never actually had a circumstance where all my spawn points were full up, so I wasn't thinking about that. All right, so the two's done its job. The four is going to generate me four energy and max me out, and then I'm going to spend all four of that energy to move me up three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the research track and to launch fighters with a strength of six. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to do that. I'm not activating the room because none of them is on a... Um, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I can also... Again, I haven't actually chosen not to... This is the thing. I can prep for these streams all I want. But the second that I... Um, yes, you can choose not to use a die. I can prepare for these streams all I want. But as soon as I start playing, I'm going to remember... Or I'm going to come across a rule that I've never 
seen before or never thought of before, and I'm like, ah, how can I can I do that? Uh, but yes, I can choose to remove a die and do nothing. This moves down a level and swallows up that ship. It's going to remove one research from my research thing, which is annoying, and that's about to happen again, and then it's going to spawn ships. So this column is empty, and then these two columns over here both get a ship because those are the lowest purple ships. The other thing you'll notice is as the mothership descends, I have less time to respond to the fighters before they attack me. So that also, you run the risk, the, the lower it gets, you run the risk of, uh, of losing the game very quickly. Okay, roll them up. Let's see. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 14. So I want nine research, so I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five. That's going here, and this guy's coming down to here. I don't want a 4 in this column. Uh, actually, I want less than a 4, ideally. Um, hmm. I'm going to put a 2 in this column to generate energy. He's going to land on an explosion. I've got a 4, a 5, and a 2. 1, 2, 3, 4... One, two, three. So if I put a four in here, I'm going to get the research I want, but I am going to get attacked. I think that's okay. So I'm going to put the four there. So one, two, three, bang. And then one, two, three, four. Also, if you, resol if you have to resolve multiple things because of where the ships end up, uh, you resolve them top down. So you will always start closest to the mothership. I hope I've done that while I've been playing this. I haven't really been paying attention, to be honest. So I've got my research. I do want to launch fighters. Um, I get a six and a four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, that works. I'm going to put the six here, which is going to get me attacked again. Uh, that's going to damage me. Oh, I should have taken damage. I didn't take damage. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, getting blown up so far. And then I'm actually going to put this die here. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to go for one, two, three, four, five, six. If I if I excavate with a six after this turn, I will excavate the super room. And um, now I'm going to blow up four of these ships, which is going to make my life substantially easier. So I'm going to generate two energy, which piques me. I'm going to use one energy to move my excavator to here. I'm going to use two energy to send out fighters with a strength of six, so these guys all get blown up, which is nice because it also means this thing can't spawn any um, uh, white ships this round. He's blown up two, and then I'm going to do nine research, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to lose that research this round, but it's only a two. It's not the five I'm having to make back up, so that's a much better result than when I lost the four earlier on. Mothership moves down, I lose a research, and then the five spawn points are immediately filled back up again by the five pink ships. So now I know what I'm facing, that's kind of a, a nice... It's nice to have that surety of knowing what's coming your way, you're not going to have any extra spawns. And I'm not doubling anything up either. Okay. Um, getting close. All right, let's see what we got. Um, I kind of want the six here because if I don't get a six, I'm going to have to excavate again because I have to excavate the whole room to be able to use it. So two, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I kind of want eleven research because then I only have the eleven left to go. Uh, but that's risky. If I put a five in this room, that white ship attacks me. But I don't want to put a four because then I move the mothership. And I've only got one, two, three. On the third mothership movement, I lose the game. And I don't lose the game at the end of the turn. If I move the mothership voluntarily with a die over that skull, I lose straight away. So I can cause myself to lose by having the fighters land on a mothership movement space. That's not good, in case you hadn't worked that one out. Um, okay. So, I need big numbers, which means I also need to blow ships up, because I'm going to have to put big numbers into here to have a chance of winning. I think I need to generate 
I'm going to generate one energy and put this guy on a explosion spot and re-roll in the hopes that I get a six somewhere. None of those is a six. Um... Fourteen is a reasonable number for three dice. Curses. Curses, curses, curses. Uh, so, yeah, I want eight. So I'm going to put four here. One, two, three, f oh no, I don't want a four there. That's a terrible idea. I need to roll something different. I'm going to put a four here. One, two, three. Ah! Oh, I don't want fours at all! Fours are motherships. Oops. Um. <laughs> this is a terrible roll. I don't like it. Make it stop. All right, I'm going to risk putting a one here so he doesn't move. Come on, six. Okay, not helpful, but I do get to put a five here. Actually, I'm going to put the five here. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, now here is where doing things in order can help. I'm going to put a three here. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Then I'm going to put the five here. And one, two, three, four, five. I am in trouble with that row because of the number of ships that are in it. But because I moved that s this row second, um, this guy didn't move twice. Which would happen if I wasn't careful, I think. Again, I've always avoided that happening. But, um, yeah, because all ships in that column move. And there's nothing saying they don't move twice. So you have to be very careful when you're going to play something that's going to make a ship shift into a column that you don't mess yourself over big time. Time Roller, hello, how's it going? Hope all is well with you. Alright, that leaves me with a one to go somewhere in this column. Um, I don't want to. Maybe I just don't let that move, because a, a strength one attack is no help right now. Uh, oh, I could generate one extra research, I guess. Is that useful? No, because I'm already getting eight. So I'm just going to go here. That ship doesn't move. So these two are done. I'm going to generate one energy, which isn't great, but whatever. And then I'm going to generate eight research for two energy. So one, two, seven, eight. So I need 14 research, but I have to get 11 of them in one room. And the problem is it would have to be that room. And if I put a five in that room, I lose because all three of those ships will attack me. I didn't think that through. I now have to excavate or I will lose. Because I have to put a low number in that middle column. Anyway, Mothership comes down, swallows up this guy, adds a white ship, and then we spawn. So uh, they're just going to fill in the two empty columns. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sixes are safe for four columns. Uh, one, two, three, four. A five or a six will lose me the game for this central column. Which means I need a six here, and then three numbers here with a small one in the middle. Uh, and those three numbers need to add up to 14 in an ideal world. Um, here goes. Talk about close, huh? Uh, okay, I've got my six. I'm going to put the six there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I re-roll. Come on, numbers that will give me 14 without having the mothership move any further down or having me attacked by three different ships at one time. That's not going to do it. Uh, Jen says, oh, right, I also need to wait a turn before I do that, because I have to uncover that room first. Right, I wasn't thinking about that. Um, so if every citizen stands outside, takes in a big breath and blows, it will help keep the ships and mothership at bay. That's how it works, right? <laughs> I wish! Uh, Alright, I'm going to stop them from moving, because that just seems like a good idea. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to get myself two energy, 
No, I'm not. That's a mothership. <laughs> I don't wanna. I'm gonna go in here and do two research. I'm probably not actually gonna do that research. Well, I'm not gonna do that research because I need three, but it's gonna put him on... It's gonna skip that mothership space, which I cannot afford, and it's gonna let me re-roll these dice. Two and three. I'm going to get three energy, and uh, so he moves down to here, and I'm going to put that there so that he only moves down one spot. <sighs> Oi. Okay. I've eked out one extra turn. Uh, and this is literally it. This next turn is the end of the game. Uh, so this lets the excavator move to here. So I have now... E Oop, what am I doing? Energy, not damage. I don't take damage by excavating my own base. I mean, <laughs> imagine. Oh yeah, there's a great room here. I'm just going to excavate it. <laughs> Entire base just collapses on top. That would not be good. Um, one energy gets me this. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, that was right. So he goes to here. I have the super room unlocked. I have the energy required, especially with this three... I have the energy required to use it. This does me nothing, because this requires three, so two is meaningless. And these guys have done their job. Um, eek. Alright, Mothership moves down. Ship gets swallowed up, is going to come back in this column, because there's nothing there. Note, nothing happens this round. But if that mothership moves by my design, or by my accident, or at the end of this round, I lose. So I have this round and this round only to achieve 14 research. <gasps> that rolled off the screen. I didn't... S I'm just going to re-roll these two again, because I'm going to put these over here. I didn't see what those were before I picked them up to re-roll them. There we go. Okay. Um, can I make this work? I've just realized something absolutely terrible. Actually, I can make this work, but I'm going to have to do it so carefully. I have to fill this room full of stuff. But where the mothership is right now... Sixes bring a fighter from the mothership to Roswell. So sixes have gone from being my friends to being something I can't use. But I need them to generate 14 research. Unless I do 11 and 3. Um, which is another way of doing it. And I could do that. So let's have a look. Um, he's going to attack me whatever goes into his column unless I put a 1 up here. Um... If I could do 11 here, 4 and 4 and 3 is 11. 1, 2, 3. 3 will get me attacked by that. 1, 2, 3. Uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 4, 4 and 3 works in this room. So if I do 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I do 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm safe for both of those columns. I then need to somehow generate... I need a 3 to go here. I would also need a 3 to go here. Or a 4 to go here. Either of which is going to get me attacked. No, that loses me the game. I don't think I can do this, can I? No, he's moved. He's moved. So he's going to attack me. He's going to attack me. No, I need him not to attack me. Okay. So I'm going to put the five here and trigger this guy. Oops. And then re-roll. Come on. Dice results that I really need. That's what I wanted. Three goes in here. Oh, no. It's not what I wanted. Is there a way I can make this work? Because I only have three damage left in the base, which means neither of those ships can attack me because these two have to for me to be able to do this. 
The problem is if I put this six down here, all three of them attack me. And if I put it down here, I can't even put it in the AA gun. He's going to destroy me. I think this is going to be a Pyrrhic victory. And by Pyrrhic victory, I mean Roswell's going to get blown sky high. Um, because what I need to do is put this here. One, two, ouch. One, two, three. That's two damage right there. And I cannot do anything. I can't re-roll this because I'd have had to place it to re-roll it. Right? Because you only re-roll after a white die is placed. One, two, three, four. I can't even go in the AA gun spot. So, this goes anywhere. Let's launch fighters for the sake of. He flies down and does one damage to my base and I lose. For the sake of finishing that, let's say that these happen simultaneously, which they don't. But if they did... I would do five research here and go up by that much for uh, one energy. And then for two energy, I would do 11 research here and win the game. That's how freaking close... Oh, also, I would launch fighters and these two would get blown up. That's how freaking close this got. I had all the dice in place to be able to do exactly what I needed to do. And that rotten six came up. If that was all... What was it? One, two, three, four. If that was a four, I would have won the game because I could have stopped him from getting to Roswell. But it wasn't, so I'm here. And there we go. That's Under Falling Skies. I love this game. <laughs> you see how challenging it is. Like, that was so incredibly close. And it just didn't quite... I couldn't quite get there. Um, but that is the base game of Under Falling Skies. Now, I said to you guys I was going to show you some of the campaign game as well, and I'm going to. Um, I'm going to just reset things, get out the things that I need to be able to do this. Jen says there's now a mother-shaped crater, mothership-shaped crater, where Roswell used to be. You are quite correct. Also, mothership-shaped is very difficult to say. Um... Yeah, Roswell has unfortunately exploded, but there we go. Um, I'm going to reset. I'm going to run a 60-second ad break. If you are subscribed to me right now, you will not see it. You will see me keep talking. Uh, otherwise, I will see you again in 60 seconds. Okay, so I need to clear up. I'm just going to get everything off here. The mothership's going back up to space where it belongs. And... I'm just going to take everything out of the way for right now because I don't actually know what this is going to be. But I need to unpack over here. There's some really, really cool stuff in this. Um, the other thing I really like about this, and you'll see this in a minute, is how you structure setting up your campaign. But uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But there we go. So that's that's Under Falling Skies. Um, let me know what you think about that. I think it's really cool. Uh, I'm also really happy that I got that far when I was playing on threat level one, because I have never played on a higher threat level. Uh, and I was literally a die roll away from winning, um, which is very cool. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, and uh, we are about to go into the campaign mode. So I just got out the campaign bit, so I want to show you all of this before we get going, because there's so much cool stuff here. This is one of the four campaign um, containers that's in the game. So first things first, look at the quality of this comic art. This is beautiful. Um, the art for this game, uh, incidentally, is done by... Quan Chai Moria, uh, who people who know board games will recognize, um, and a name I wasn't familiar with, which is uh, Petra Bohacek. Uh, again, my sincere apologies if I have just butchered that name, but they've done such a spectacular job with this. I mean, look at this. You get this awesome thing. Helicopter, TV helicopters flying past the Statue of Liberty as an alien mothership approaches. I've never seen anything like it, says Samantha Legrand. And then the aliens blow up. 
not the White House, that's been done, let's take out Lady Liberty. Uh, and start chasing down civilians. And the general here thinks to himself, I have. Well, that's ominous! Um, okay. Um, so this is chapter one, the invasion. And uh, I'm just going to show you, there's another little image up the top here. It says, Gargantuan spacecraft... Sorry, my handshake's coming in again. Gargantuan spacecraft descend on our planet, spewing hordes of alien ships into the skies. As cities struggle desperately to defend themselves, our research team tries to gather some intelligence that could help us fight back. Um, there you go. So, um, we're going to start cracking open this campaign. And then I will talk about what actually happens. So first things first, this is the really cool way that these punch boards have been... Oh, and of course it just broke apart. So I can't show it quite as easily. But these punch boards are actually joined together into like an accordion thing. So you fold it out and then it's just a really neat way of packing this much stuff in. But I'm going to punch these out. Um, you'll notice these guys are fully blurred. They would have just as much information as one of these guys would have. But they're only showing you half of the information for chapter one of the campaign. Um, and you'll start to understand. So that is... That's one of these cards. That's a city. We've already seen cities. We know what they look like. Um, that's another one of these cards. That's another city. Again, we know what they look like too. Um, I'm just going to get all this stuff out. And then we also have a new type of card here, of which we have two that we can't see. Although, I think it is safe if you study those blurred images for a minute. And then look against the left-hand two characters here. I've got them the wrong way around, but if I do that, I think it is pretty safe to assume that they're probably those two people. And that's all we know. And the reason I can safely assume that is that the other two are indeed the two that we have seen. So we have uh, Jackson Moss, who is the colonel that we just saw having seen the aliens before, which is a little frightening. And Samantha Legrand, who is the reporter who has just seen them. And we're going to get to use one of these characters. There are also six tokens here. Um, I don't know what they do. Uh, I'm going to punch all of this stuff kind of back into its punch board again when we're done. I'm just taking it all out now to show you what's what. Um, I don't Actually, I don't know if I'll be able to get it back in, but I'm going to try. Um, but yes, so that's, that's what that is. And then... Uh, we also get a new base tile, because we're going to have a specifically designed base. Oh, I can do that. That's wonderful. That'll just make it that little bit more uh, structured when I give this to whatever game store I give it to. Um, so I know I can do that. Great. We also have a new base tile here. We have base tile D. You only get A, B, and C in this game. You'll notice there this blue room, which we have not talked about yet. That was the thing that I didn't want to include in my first game, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um... Do I need any of that stuff? I might need you. Okay, so, having seen all of that, we get chapter one, the mission. The invasion, sorry. <laughs> They're all missions. Um, first things first, you'll see all components have in the top left-hand corner a chapter mark. That shows that this comes out in chapter one. This is a fully replayable campaign. There's no legacy game here. You're not destroying anything when you're done with it. Uh, you can reset this and play it again. There are additional components. It says if a scenario needs to use the orange ship or the six numbered tokens, which are the things I didn't punch out, uh, it will tell you how to use them. This first scenario, I believe... Well, actually, it might do. I'm not sure. I haven't seen any of this. Um, we get a note here that you might be able to change dice values. You cannot change them up to a seven. Uh, there are now rooms, and you see it down here in the bottom left. This room actually has two effects. I use it with two dice. I have to pay four energy, but I get to use both effects. And we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, and that's that. So, here's what we have to do. I am going to randomly shuffle these. Uh, and do that. I'm going to randomly mix these. I'm not looking at when these stop. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to randomly mix these. And I'm going to do that. Um... So we now have a pile that has a mission, a city, and a character. And another pile that has a mission, a city, and a character. The way the campaign works is, at least for chapter one, which is all I have looked at, and all I did literally was look at it to go, okay, that's what that looks like. So this is all fresh and new. Um, 
we set those two piles up. We're going to pick one. And the other one is an automatic loss. That city, that scenario, and that character are out of the campaign. We focused our attention elsewhere. <laughs> Done. We can't go back and fix it. There are four of everything. Obviously, the other two of each are blurred in this version of the game. But there are four of everything in Chapter 1. So you're going to play twice. You're going to try and rescue a city once. Then you're going to try and rescue a city, a, a, another city. Um, and if you fail, you flip the city over and try again on the more... Um, the more powerful player power to try and succeed a second time. Kind of like Pandemic Legacy, for those of you who've played it. <laughs> Jen says, I'm sniffing a radio play coming out of this stream. Not out of this stream, no. But I am probably going to do something. And I haven't quite decided how to do it yet. But I'm going to do something with my podcast with my campaign. Uh, very specifically my campaign. And I haven't quite decided how much to do because that's going to be spoilerific. Anyway, here's my question. Do we want to? So uh, Now, there are two ways of choosing your mission. Um, you can either just look at this comic that's on the tile and get a gist of what the mission is about. Or you can flip it over and read that. And that's all I'm going to show you. And it tells you what the mission is. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go kind of based on the comic. So this one, we have a fighter pilot here um, who looks to me suspiciously like the character we're not using. But I'm not sure. Uh, and he shoots one down, says one down, and then realizes exactly how many there are. 1,295 to go. So presumably that's got something to do with shooting down aliens. This one, um, we see a military defense going on, and then this character uh, is talking on a walkie, and it says help is still on the way. So I'm going to guess maybe we have to survive in that one. Not sure. Um, the military base defense, fortuitously or accurately perhaps, uh, features... What just happened? Oh, my camera just froze. Uh, hang on, let me just reconnect. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Come on. Whoop. Why did you just... There we go, got me back. All right, the military base defense is going to feature the colonel, who lets me increase two dice... Placed or unplaced by one. That's really interesting, because if you think about what that means, one, I get to make more powerful actions, but also, if you think about it, I'm actually going to be able to place a die, move the aliens, and then up it, which means they're not moving as far as they might do otherwise. The fighter pilot mission features Samantha Legrand, the reporter, who lets me advance along a space on the research track as long as its value is three or less. So I just get free research, which is great. She's a reporter, of course I do. I get to use that ability once per game. And then later on in the campaign, you can flip these characters over and their powers become more powerful. I don't know anything about that. I'm not going to go into it right now. The last thing is we are choosing which city we're going to defend. The military base is in Mexico City. And if I go there, whenever I place a die to move the excavator four spaces or fewer, I move the excavator immediately, costing no energy. Um, which means not only can I move it for free, but I get to use the rooms I excavate that turn. That's very powerful. Alternatively, I can go and rescue Montreal. Two or more room effects of the same type can be resolved simultaneously. Sum their values, then perform the effect once with that value. So what that means is if I put a die in here for research and a die in here for research, I can go, I'm activating research and I'm going to add those two numbers together, even though this room is not connected, and play their sum. So where I was talking at the beginning of my stream, where you can trip yourself up by having to go room by room and then not actually being able to fully progress, with this, I can link those rooms together and then do that. Or I could put two weaker dice into fighter jets so that I'm not moving the aliens as far and then sum them together and still blow everybody up. Um, so those are my player powers. Now, I am going to leave it up to my chat to decide. Am I going to defend the military base with the colonel in Mexico? Or am I going to defend... Uh, or am I going to try and take down the alien fighters in Montreal with the reporter? Uh, I am going to give you 30 seconds to tell me which of those you would like me to do. And then that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm just going to waffle away for a second while that is happening. Um... But yeah, I think this is going to be interesting because it's going to kind of give me some options of, of what I would like to do with um, uh, with either one. They're, they're both extremely powerful and I think that they both offer me some really, really cool um, 
cool ways of, of doing things. So uh, just give it a few more seconds for people to decide. Um, and it's no surprise that because I'm in Canada, we are going to go and defend Montreal. Okay, so Montreal it is, which means the colonel is dead, the military base was destroyed, and Mexico City is no more. At least in this campaign. Obviously, I'm only playing this first mission. So Montreal requires my base to be C up, D down. So my base is that. Um, so I'm not going to use Roswell A or B again, so they can go back in the box. Uh, and then I'm going to put Montreal here. And then this is going to be the same layout in the sense of the descending order of these four tiles is always the same. But again, I'm going to play on threat level one. And again, what does that do? Oh, they'll just up that to 12. That's not terrible. But again, I'm going to play with a threat level determined by one of the three lower things. One, two, three, four, five, six. In fact, no. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's not do the same tile. That's four, five, six, which means the very bottom level. So my research is going to be a little harder at the beginning of the game, but then it's going to be the standard difficulty for the rest of it, which I'm kind of okay with. Mothership comes in here. Incidentally, if you want it, there's a turn guide on the back of the mothership. Now, I know how um, I'm comfortable with what I'm doing with that, so I'm not too worried. Uh, but you can have the turn guide up if you wish to have it. Um, so, uh, just a couple of things. I'm just going to talk quickly. Uh, you're going to use the rule book here to make sure I hit it all, but I just want to talk quickly about the rules we're introducing for this game because we're now doing the campaign. So you can actually read, and there's a thing here that says you can stop reading here and play your first game. And what will happen is what just happened. The only thing that was in that game I just played that is not in the base game was the fact that I played on threat level one and flipped a tile over. They recommend not doing that for your first game, as would I. The nice thing about flipping this over is it's also it's made my research harder, but the mothership movement is not going to be any more difficult because this doesn't have any. Um, anyway, things that are going to be introduced. Threat level. So we have introduced the idea of flipping tiles. I already did that, but this is where it would come in in the order of learning the game. The different cities. We've already talked about that too, and the fact that this tells me what my base layout is going to be. The idea of a damaged city, so I can flip the city over if um, uh, if I lose a game and try again with a more powerful player power. However, here's the big one. Robots. And the robots are the two blue dice. So these are coming into play this game. The orange ship is not, but the two blue dice are. Robots are created by one of the blue rooms that is in the base. And when you trigger um, one of the blue rooms... You total up that value, maximum six, so if the total value is seven, it's still six, and you get a robot. The robot then goes into any room of your choice, so I could put it here, for example, and it stays there for the rest of the game unless I choose to remove it and use it again later. It does not, installing a robot, this is a six, but the enemy ships do not move six because I've installed a robot. It's not time passing, I guess, because my people are doing something there. Uh, a robot has come in and taken over. The, when it firstly comes in, it is turned to one side, and I can't do anything with it that round. So I'm blocking that space for that round. But every round thereafter, the robot automatically generates a die of that value in that space. So that's an incredibly powerful thing to do. Um... They just, yeah, they just stay where they are, and generate and generate and generate. So I could just get six research. Um, the, uh, what am I doing? Um, yeah, right. Every turn that you use the robot, it decreases its value by one because the robot is, is wearing out, essentially. So thy six would become a five the next round and then a four and then a three. So after a maximum of six turns, it then goes away. Um... You can choose not to resolve a robot if you want to, and it still costs energy to do so because you are still powering that room. Um, what? Just trying to think. You you lose a robot if the excavator backs over them because it chews up the room, but it also chews up the robot. Um, uh, if you put them into a multi-space room 
whether it's a multi-purpose room or just a double space room, uh, the turn that they show up and they're exhausted and you can't use them yet, they count as that room is empty because you can't use that space. So you are delaying a turn. But I mean, that goes for any room that you put them into. Uh, and you can put a robot into the AA guns and they don't do anything. So there's no real reason to do so. That's pretty much everything. Oh, last thing. I forgot to show the beginning of the campaign. So here's the opening story. We have a little guy. I'm just going to try and steady this. We have a guy, little little boy, playing with his model aeroplane. Or a little child, I guess. There's nothing to say it's a boy. Playing with a model aeroplane. And there's a meteor above the Roswell gas station, which he sees. The meteor comes down nearby. Crashes into the ground. He runs up to have a look and then sees it, looks over the ridge, and oh my goodness, it's not a meteor, it's a spaceship. So that's the beginning of the campaign. I, just, I love this comic art. It's so good. Um, yeah, let's get going. So, um, I have robots now. I can use them when I want. Let's just get everything set up quickly, and on we go. I'm going to play this game a little bit faster, because I've already explained everything. Um, so there are my spaceships, there is my starting energy, there is my starting research, and there is my starting base damage, i.e. none. Excavator begins here. So note, I do not have... Montreal cannot research at the beginning of the game. Um, I have to excavate research rooms before I'm allowed to do it. So excavation in Montreal is critical out the gate. So let's have a look at my scenario. Um, for some reason, this is this scenario is called Battle for the Sky. For some reason, the enemy has decided to hit this city extra hard. Place the orange ship and one white ship on the mothership to be spawned at the end of the first round. Well, poop. I am using the orange ship after all. I realise I said I'm not using it and I hadn't actually checked the rules. Um, So the rules are that the orange ship in this scenario follows the rules for purple ships. So I'm facing six regular ships in this scenario, which means it will deploy before the white ships. Um, and it does not get... I'm just going to leave this here, actually. It does not get uh, destroyed if I blow it up. It just simply respawns. And one time this game, I get free um, research advance as long as it is... A value of three or less. Uh, I can use that player power. I'm pretty sure I should just check this because I haven't used characters yet. I'm pretty sure I can use that. Yeah, I can use it whenever I want. So I can choose to do some research and if I'm not going to get enough, like, so for example, if I was, if I was here, coming here, this is a three, if I could only put two on research, I could use it immediately after rolling all of the dice to go up to the three and then use my two to go a level higher. So I can choose when I'm doing things. Okay, let's go. Five. Okay. Three fives, a six, and a four. Well, one, two, three, four, five. I kind of want to uncover research very quickly. Um... Let's see, what do I not want? I want. I don't want a 5 in this column, I want this to be a 4 or a 6. Um, I mean, I could put a level 5 robot out straight away, if I want to. Do I want to? I don't know. Because um, I'm thinking I might put the 4 here. Although I could put the 5 here, and then next round, um, I could use... I could build a robot without using any energy. Uh, so maybe, one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe this gets the six. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this ship, one, two, three, four, five, six, comes down to here. I don't want a six in this column for obvious reasons. There's a mother ship right there. Um, now the problem is if I place that six, I immediately re-roll everything. So do I want to do that yet? Uh, the problem is, first round of the game, the right-hand column, the only thing you can do there is AA guns. Which is kind of frustrating. 
But it does mean I can put a five there, and then this thing goes one, two, three, four, and lands on a fighter space. Now, note, Montreal needs three energy to launch fighters by default. I need to get down to here before I'm only roll using one energy to launch. Um, so I'm going to place the five here first and move that down four. Um, I'm also going to place a five here and move that down five. And then I am going to... One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm then going to place the six here, move that down six, and re-roll the other two dice. I've got a four and a three. That's beautiful. Um, I'm going to put the three here. He comes down one, two, three. So I'm generating stupid amounts of energy, but that's fine. And then I'm going to put the four here to launch fighters. And my fighter values are one, four, four. So all three of those ships are going to get blown up. Which is delightful. Jen says, so the aliens have crash landed in Roswell and the New Mexico State Department has phoned Canada for help. Unfortunately, the aliens have spies that tap the phones and have decided to keep Canada from helping by attacking Montreal. I'll take it. That sounds surprisingly plausible. Um, in terms of I didn't think you were going to be able to tie all of those together and you've done a great job of it. Well played. Uh, yeah, that, sure. That's exactly what just happened. Okay, well, um... So this has done its job, so I... Oops, let's not take my research off. I need that. Uh, I have no interest in that. Um, I'm going to use... One energy first to excavate all the way to here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Because then my eight energy that I'm gaining here, which is ridiculous, at least I'm getting six of it instead of only five. And then I'm going to use three of it to launch fighters of strength four, and then boom, boom, boom. Three ships get blown up. Now I have two research rooms available to me, including one that adds one to the value of the dice. <laughs> Jen says I'm a writer. Typing things together is kind of what I do. Tying things together, even. It, that's completely fair. Uh, I just hadn't thought far enough. I, it, I think, you know what? I'm more impressed by the speed you did that, because I hadn't thought about it yet. So well played. All right, we're going to bring this down. Now the nice thing is, because I blew up three ships, even though this thing is spawning a white ship, one of them is not coming out. Um, so, uh, it is going to spawn everything again. So, one, two, three. Those come out. Now, remember, the orange ship counts as a purple ship, so it's coming out here automatically. And then one white ship is coming in here, and this one is going to sit back here and come in next turn. Okay. Done. Rolling again. That didn't roll properly. There we go. Um... Okay, what are we doing? So 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so I can get up to 9 research. And I think I am going to do that. So I'm going to put 4 in here. That's going to use 2 energy, but that counts as a 5. And this only moves 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces. Uh, th it, but it, it still qualifies as a 5. The aliens don't move further. So it's kind of the antithesis of what I was having last game, where I was losing one on the die value, but the aliens were moving just as far. Um, then I'm going to do... Let's see. What else do I want to do? I want to put a 1... Actually, let's put the five. No, I want the four. I don't want to lose this four. So I think I'm just going to put it there right now. So that's nine research, because Montreal allows me to link those two rooms, even though they are not linked. Um, and then I have to re-roll. Oh, I didn't move anything, did I? So one, two, three, four. That's kind of what I wanted. I'm going to put the six in here. That's going to generate me five energy, but this is going to move six spaces, so it's on a ship. It's on a uh, attack, rather. I'm then going to put four here. So this is going to move down one, two, three, four, and get blown up. This is going to move down one, two, three, four, and it can't move right because there are ships in its way. 
And that leaves me with one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm fine with that. Um, so I'm going to place this on here, and I'm going to get to use an energy to generate a robot, if I can create enough energy. I think I can. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's my movement done. So first things first, I'm going to generate five energy this turn, but I can only actually accept three. So I need to use something. So I'm going to do my research first. I'm going to accumulate those to be the same thing. So otherwise, I would only get to go two spaces. Three plus three, which is six. I have nine value research here. So because I'm going to combine them together, that qualifies as nine. So I go three, six, seven, eight, nine. And that costs me three energy. Then I'm going to generate my five. So I go back up to six. Then I'm going to use three of them to launch fighters. And I'm going to blow up this guy and this guy and this guy. Um, and then that's done. And then I'm going to generate a robot for one energy. And that's going to be a robot of value four. And I'm going to put that. Where am I going to put that? I'm going to put that in here. So next round, I'm going to be able to just generate four energy by having the robot there. Placing it there, remember, does not move any ships down. Not that there are any to place, obviously. Um, I don't get to use it right now, so I'm not getting that energy. But I can still place dice in that column. These are now called worker dice because we have robot dice. I can place a worker die in that column because I haven't placed one yet. One worker die goes in every column. Robots are ignored for that. So for example, I could excavate in this column or I could use the AA guns, even though there is a robot on site generating the energy. So that's that. Mothership moves down. My excavator goes back two spaces. That's kind of okay. Um, and then everything respawns. So this gets a ship, this gets a ship. And then this gets a ship. And then I get to choose between these two. Uh, I'm going to put this here, I think, because there are more explosions and fewer motherships up at the top. While I have the advantage of, of dodging that mothership. Because if I put it in here, the problem is then I have two dice rolls that could land me on a mothership. And I don't want to move this mothership down faster than I have to. Um, so that's that. Okay, rolling. Oh, another low roll. Robot is now active. One, two, three, four. So if I excavate, I would get these two research rooms. With the dice I have. Um, I was really hoping to get a six so I could re uh, excavate to here while there's nothing else to do in that column. Um... Five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So if I put two sixes in research, I could actually get up to here on the research track. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I don't think. But I do want to excavate. Uh, I think I want to excavate further than I'm going to right now. So let's see what I can do. One, two, three, four. If I put a four in there, that ship could get blown up. There's a lot of motherships at the bottom. Oh my lord, I just saw... So that's the trade-off. There's no bad mothership thing on this side, but look at how many motherships are on that bottom tile. I have to be very careful what I do with this guy. I don't want two to go in there. I want three, four... Three or four, ideally. Six isn't great, because he would attack me, but... This is a seven. Oh, I just saw that. I have to launch fighters of strength seven to attack this guy. Um... Blah. Sorry, that's the vampire thing, isn't it? And three ships move if I move this column. Ugh. Okay, right, well, let's see. I could just not move those guys. I could place a one. I'm going to place a one. I'm just going to stall that row for a minute. Um... Then I'm going to place a 4 in the research room. So that's a 5, which is going to get me to this space. And that's going to force me to re-roll. So with a luck, I'll get a 6. Even a 5 would be good, but I'd rather have a 6. There's a 6. I'm going to put a 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to put a 6 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this guy comes down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then shifts across. 
Oh, these guys also came down. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. Um, actually, I'm not necessarily going to place that six there right now because that's going to. Then I'll end up moving this column twice. So I want to place this column first if I can. I, right now, I'm using two energy and then I'm going to get three. So I could launch fighters. Uh, only one thing right now is going to get blown up. Is there a way of making more things get blown up? Yes, but it's going to use energy. Because if I go here... Um, and then I end up placing a two in here. Um, okay, I'm going to place this here. And he's just going to move one and get swallowed. Then I'm going to place my six here. And this guy's going to come down and shift across. And then my three... I could launch fighters with a strength of three, but that's not going to do me any good. So no, actually, that's, that's a lie. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to be able to use that energy because I will have enough to do some research. Oh no, it's a research of four that I need, isn't it? Uh, that would be five, six, seven, which is not nine. So yeah, he's going to go here. He is only going to move one space, so he's just going to get swallowed back up by the mothership. Three is going to go here. And that's just going to move down there. I'm, that's all I'm going to do. And then if I can stun that line, I might... Oh, but that's where my fighters are. Ah, but I'm unlocking this. So I might be able to stun that line and blow that ship up next turn. So that's what I'm doing. Um, they've all moved their distances, so then I resolve. These dice come off. Um, my, uh, my robot gives me three energy, because there's minus one in this room. So one, two, three. I'm going to use two of that energy to give myself five research, which lets me go up one level. And then I'm going to use one more energy to excavate all the way to here. Um, so I've now unlocked a couple more research rooms. This one is no energy cost, uh, but does have a minus one. So that would be an interesting place to dump a robot. Uh, oh, this robot also goes down to three because I've used him. Um, yeah, interesting. And then I've unlocked a fighter room that's only one energy instead of three. So I can now fight much more effectively. Mothership comes down, swallows this guy up, and generates a white ship. And then we spawn. So this column has nothing in it. And then the furthest down... Ah, now here we have multiples. I want to see how this spawn works. I think it's going to spawn here because there's ships higher in this column. But I just want to check that. The drop point that is farthest from the highest ship in its column. Uh, these two and this one are all higher, which means this guy comes in over here. There we go. All right, next round. Oh, shoot. Where was he? Was he here or was he on the explosion? I don't think he was on the explosion, so he was there. Um, this is why I need my dice tray back. Okay. What are we doing this round? Let's think. I need energy. I'm going to get two energy from that, but that's not a lot. I kind of want five research, because if I can do five research, I can use Samantha to bump me up to this one. Um, and I feel like using her on a three, she only gets to advance one space. So even though there's a two and a one following, I can't use that to shift up. So I think I want five research. Um, there's a space here that lets me do one fewer. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to put this here. And bring this down, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm going to get five research for no energy cost, which I like. Then I have to be so careful of this row. I want a three in this row. So I think at two energy cost, I'm going to go here. Then that means one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and I've dodged all of those motherships. Not that moving the mothership right now is the worst idea, but the nice thing is too, I can use Samantha to, I can, I'm going to get my five to go up to here, I can use Samantha to get me to here, and then my three will take me up to here. And then I'm stuck anyway because I've got a six. But that's going to push me nicely up that scale. Um, now, two, four, and six. What do I, oh, I have to re-roll those because I just placed the white die. Two, two, and one. Um, I feel like I should probably generate more energy. Because right now I'm getting two energy and I'm using two energy, which is going to leave me back where I was. But I also want to launch fighters. And I want to launch fighters with a much bigger number than I'm getting right now. The trouble is... No, I can do it. 
There's just not much else for me to do. If I stun lock this row, um, this guy gets blown up. That's not a bad move. Um, hmm. I'm not generating a robot this round because I've locked off my ability to do so. Um, do I want to stun lock one of these columns? Uh, I kind of want that guy to move one. So what I think I might do is I might put one here. So I'm currently using three energy because that's for the excavator. Which leaves me one energy left to launch fighters. I need to re-roll to launch fighters. So I'm not going to stun lock this row. I'm actually going to let them move one space. So they're going to go one down and then this guy moves across. And then I'm going to re-roll this and hope to get a five. Um, that's safe for moving these two ships and we'll blow that one up. I don't know if that's the best move I've got. That's a two. Um, then I'm going to stun lock that row too. So this is going to move one and across. This is going to move one. And that's all that's happening. So he's going to get swallowed back up. Now when they get swallowed back up, they do come back out of the mothership. Um, it doesn't matter that they're white. They don't get destroyed because the mothership has collected them back up. So these guys have done their job. This is going to get me five research. So four, five. I'm going to tap Samantha and use her, so she's done, to get three. And then I'm going to use this guy for two energy uh, to get three more. So two, three. Uh, my robot is going to activate, move down to two and get me two more energy. And then for one of those energy, I'm going to excavate one space down to here. It's not a huge use, but it did just allow me to kind of manipulate these the way I wanted. Did I move these? Does anyone know? Did I? I don't think I can have done. This must have moved down to there, because that's why I was trying to fight her. Which means I don't think I moved him either. I hope I'm right about that, because I just messed myself up otherwise. Um, that's that. Mothership moves down, swallows these guys back up. It's going to shift down to here, and then this guy's going to respawn in this column. There's nothing happening this round. This respawns in this column, and then this respawns uh, either in this column or in this column. I'm going to put it in this one, because the fewer times I have three ships moving down, I think the better. Uh, okay, there we go. Rolling on. Oh my goodness, I need to stop doing that. Um, so there are my dice. I'm going to get one energy this round from my robot. I can just pick robots back up, right? Yeah, for any reason I can remove a robot. I'm just going to have removed that robot. Because one energy is kind of lame. And I want to open that space back up. Okay. How do I want to do this? That's the question. Incidentally, I didn't specify it, but that last round was an example of where I don't want to use Montreal's ability, because I specifically wanted to split. I guess it wouldn't have mattered, actually, because I could have used 8 to go 4, 1, 3, and then used... No, because Samantha only lets me move one space, so I could have only gone up to 2. So it was more beneficial to me to actually hold off and use that uh, uh, separate those two rooms, uh, so that I could do that more efficiently. Um, anyway, what am I doing? So, 1, 1, 2, 3 and six. Let's think. Where do I want to place a six? Not in this column, because that'll trigger a mothership. This column would guarantee I'm going to get attacked, because it would put this ship here. That's not the end of the world. One, two, three, four, five. That would just put me there. That would get me attacked. But also put this guy ready to get blown up. And that would get me attacked. and move the mothership down a space. Um, and this is going to move the excavator back, which is why I wanted to do this silly little excavation, is in case I'm forced to move the mothership there, uh, I would rather keep this fighter room open, because having to spend three energy to launch fighters is ridiculous, and I don't want to be enforcing that. 
Um, okay. What am I doing? If I put a one in this row, all three of these fighters, all three of these ships, rather, are in a position to get blown up. I... Why am I even thinking about this? There is a one here, so if I can get six research going somewhere else. So I'm going to put one here. So he's going to get blown up, he's going to get blown up, and he's going to get blown up. If I put a six here, which is what I'm going to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I need to do six research somewhere, and I need to generate some energy. Uh, um, this is irritating because whichever if I put my two if I put because I, I kind of mm, I could put the three in I guess oh the three's good here actually it's going to get me blown up over here but that's fine I'm going to put the three in um I want to put the three in this column because it's going to put both of these guys on an explosion space. I could put it on the AA gun, but then the mothership would move down. It would stop a white ship from spawning, though, and I have a lot of ships on the board right now. Okay, I'm going to AA gun that, which might be a bad move. But it moves both of those down two. I'm not going to get seven fighter strength this round because I'm not putting another one onto fighters. So this moves down by one. That may be a bad move, we'll see. But I get to re-roll my dice, and what I really, 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 really want is a five. Nope. But I'm going to give myself three energy, because right now I'm using three and I only have one. So I'm going to give myself three energy. Um, and that's going to put this here. Which means everybody's getting blown up, and I really want a five. Five. Actually, that doesn't do me much good. Yeah, it does. Five. That rolled off the screen. Oh, did <laughs> does that count? Because it was still on the screen. It was a five. You know what? I'm going to give myself a gimme because this game's hard. I'm taking the five. It's going here. That gives me a total of six research for that, which will let me get up to this space. Um, okay, so this has done its... Oh, and I need to move. So one, two, three, four, five. I didn't move these guys yet. One, two, three, four. And then this guy hits me, so I get blown up. Did I move this five? Yes. Did I move that three? Yes. Did I move that one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Punk Runner. Punk Runner says they saw a five, so I'm taking my five. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, I like to stick by my own rules, but every now and then I'm like, ah, I really need a gimme right now. So, so... So, so satisfyingly, I'm going to remove this six first of all. I'm going to use my one energy. You get blowed up, you get blowed up, you get blowed up, you get blowed up. That's just nice. Emptying the board of stuff. Now, they all come back on again because they all, they're all they all purple ships, even the orange one. But just clearing that a little bit and taking fewer attacks in the next couple of turns is worthwhile. This has done its job already. Uh, I'm going to gain three energy, one, two, three, and then I'm going to use two energy to give myself six research. I don't get to do this because that is a two energy space, but I'm fine with that because I got the six and the six was the much bigger deal. Um, Mothership moves down another level. The excavator backs up one and now it cannot back up any further. So that fighter space is completely secure and then it respawns everything. So first up one goes in here and then basically every column gets a ship because it has to respawn if it can. So I right now need 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I need 21 research to win the game. Um, this is, ironically, look, even though I'm, I'm playing something I've never played before and I'm, it's only my second time playing with an extra threat level, uh, I feel like I'm closer to winning than I have been in any of my other games. That's going to get me attacked, though. Um, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Um, okay, so first up, I'm going to put a six in here. I'm going to get myself attacked by this guy. Do they go back? When they attack you, do they just leave the board? Or is it only when they get blown up? Um...
Do, 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 do. I just want to check one thing because I realized uh, if a ship it hits your base, takes damage, move the damage marker after damaging a city, the ship victoriously returns to the mother ship to be respawned next round. Yeah, so even though that was a white ship that just attacked me, it does come back up here. I may have played that wrong in my last game, I can't remember. Um, and then this guy goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and is on a fighter space, which is nice. Um, next. I want to move the middle row two if I can, because then both of them could get blown up. Uh, I need energy badly. I'm going to put five on here. So one, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five. Uh, there's a six in there, so I want six fighter strength. Now, unfortunately, if I put that here, I am going to move the mothership. But that means I don't lose any research, so I'm okay with that. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the mothership is moving down by one. But I'm now blowing up this guy as well. So I'm going to take four ships out this round. I have to re-roll, because that was a white die. Six and four. Um... Okay. How much energy am I using right now? I'm using one energy, and I'm gaining four. So I'm going to be on five, and I'm currently using one. Um, so whichever column I put the six in right now, I'm going to trigger uh, a mothership. I don't really want to do that. But I can't re-roll the six. I have to put it somewhere. I could trigger a I could put a five out. But a five in here triggers it too. I think that's the best thing though. Uh, I'm gonna put this in here. So these are gonna move five, which means I get hit by that ship, and this guy comes down to here, and that does me a damage. And then the four is going to go in this column here. So I'm using more energy to do more research, but that's going to let me go up here. All right, that's what I'm doing. So one, two, three, four. There we go, done. This guy's done his job. Uh, I'm going to launch fighters at strength six. So blown up, blown up, blown up, blown up. And everybody else is still alive. And then I'm going to gain four energy. And I'm going to do nine research for two energy. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I now have 15 research to go. Mothership moves down a level, does not move me down off the five. Thank you very much, which is why I was okay with moving it down. And then things respawn, which means every row fills up. Um, I guess there is... Well, no, I have to actually do it the right way. So those two fill up. Then this one fills up, and then these two become the white ships. So you don't have a lot of choice in where things are. Um, Punk Runner asks, where am I from? This game isn't out in the US as far as I'm aware. Yeah, um, I'm guessing you joined the stream after I'd started. Um, I did mention this right at the very, very beginning, so thank you for the asking the question. For anybody who was not here when I started, you're correct. This game is not out in the US. It's due out in Q4, so it should be out any time. Um, I actually saw Check Games Edition post on Twitter, I believe. Uh, yay, this is out in Europe and US. It's on its way to you, so it shouldn't be far away. Uh, this is a pre-production copy that CGE sent me uh, so that I could do this stream. Uh, not a pre-production copy, sorry. It's a full production copy. It's a demo copy. So if you weren't here when I was introducing some of the stuff earlier, uh, here, for example, we have a character. The other two characters in the first campaign mission are blurred out, so we cannot see any detail of who they are. Uh, and I presume that campaign two, three, and four are all blurred out as well. Um, so this is uh, this is a demo copy that I'm using for this purpose. And those of us who are being sent these things, um, we also got a full full copy of the game, uh, so that I can use um, 
uh, I can play the game myself and, and you know, I can familiarize myself with everything. Uh, I actually haven't done that yet. I'm going to do that after I've done this stream. But we're giving our demo copies to game cafes in our area. So hopefully if a reviewer somewhere near you had a copy of this, uh, then you may be able to get uh, some play in before it even comes out in the US. Uh, as to where I'm from, I am from the UK originally. Uh, I'm from London, but I live in Toronto, Canada, and that's where I am broadcasting from at the moment. Um, so yes, that, that fills in that gap. Thank you very much for bringing that up because I should have mentioned that for those people who came in a little later to the stream. Okay, so um, I did all of that. He moved down, he's respawned, my turn. So 15 research to go. I could win this turn if I play my cards right. I just can't get damaged by everybody. Okay, first things first, I'm going to put six. I'm going to put a six into here, so that's seven research right there. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm going to, I'm going to try and force this. Uh, that is going to get me attacked. Um, so this guy comes all the way down and attacks me. He goes back up. And this guy goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, can plus ones give me a seven? I don't think they can, actually. It's not an edit of a die. It is just plus one to the value of a die. No, I can have a seven. Of course I can, because otherwise I couldn't do this without being able to amalgamate. Yeah, that makes total sense. So, that does one damage. So I have two damage left on my base, and I need to somehow generate 15 research without taking it. I think this is possible. One, two, three, four, five. And without moving that mothership, because... Well, no, I, need, I just need to hit the research. I need to do it this turn, or I need to move the mothership, because I don't. I can't land there. If I land there, I'm stuffed. I'm going to put the five here. So I need three energy. So this guy is obviously going to attack me. I never had a choice there, so he goes back up. And then one, two, three, four, five. Um, I can actually move the mothership. That's okay. So right now, I've got... 12 research, and I need 15, so I only need 3 more. So I'm going to put 5 in here, which is going to give me 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to put... <coughs> I'm going to put the... Where are you going? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's fine. That's going to stun lock you a little bit. Uh, I'm going to generate energy because I need energy. So one, two, three, four, five. He can't move left because there's a ship there. I have to re-roll this. I just don't want this to be... I should not really care what this is, I don't think. Six. Oh, shoot. Where was he? He was there, I think. Yeah. So that's a six. Uh, I'm going to put that... Here. So they're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so I don't get attacked. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but that means the mothership moves down two spaces, which would be terrifying, except I now get to do everything. So that's done its job. This comes off, uh, that is minus 1, so that's 4 energy. I then expend 3 energy to gain 7, 12, plus 4, that is 16 research. I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 15, and I have one to spare, and that game is won. Montreal has been defended, the aliens tried to stop me from interfering. Sure, Mexico City unfortunately went up in smoke, because there wasn't anything I could do about it, but, um, uh, the second that I have landed all of that research, and because of Montreal, I can even combine them all into one thing. I get to the 11 research spot, and I had to confirm that because I've never won this game before, but simply landing there is enough to win the game. So I have done that, um, and that is Under Falling Skies. There we go. Um, I hope that that was informative and enjoyable for everybody, and uh, gave you some idea of what this game does. I <laughs> really enjoyed that. Um, this is a great game. I really, really like it. It's so simple. It's a bit of iconography, but it all makes complete sense. Um, and uh, and yeah, I, I really, really like this one. So 
Uh, hopefully that was as enjoyable for you as it was for me. Thank you very much for joining me for it. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm just going to do my spiel for a couple of minutes. Uh, feel free to ask them before I'm done. Um, but yeah, this should be due out uh, sometime very shortly. Uh, I believe it is due out. Uh, it's in Q4. Um, so it should be out hopefully uh, sometime in the next... Um, uh, you know, well, in the next month, I assume it'll be out before Christmas. Um, I'm just going to expand myself while I talk to you. There we go. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for it. If this is something that you've enjoyed, it should be out soon. And um, that'll be something that uh, uh, will give you a lot of enjoyment, I think, if you enjoy solitaire games. The nice thing is, although it takes up a lot of vertical table space, it is not a massive game. Um, this is not something you could obviously play on an aeroplane tray table. Uh, that wouldn't work at all, but you know it's not. It doesn't take out a whole thing, so you can play it sideways on a dining table and still be perfectly capable of kind of keeping up with what's going on. So uh, that, in and of itself, is an advantage with this one. Um, I think. Uh, what else is there to say about it? I don't know, really. I mean, that's everything. That's that's shown you everything the game has to offer, other than spoiling further campaign missions. And I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not looking into my copy of this, like the full copy that they sent me. I'm only looking at this demo copy. Um, so that's as much information as I can provide. Um, Challenge-wise, I guess the one thing we didn't look at, and I will just uh, actually shrink myself back down again, but just to show you uh, some of the other tiles. Um, so uh, the other threat tiles, we have uh, this guy, which is going to do much more excavation. And that icon there in the bottom right-hand corner is damage, which means that the, um, the mothership fires its uber laser, or whatever it happens to be, and damages your base by one. That's the topmost tile. Uh, the second tile down is going to tank you. This is the one we played with in the first game. Uh, it tanks you a lot more research uh, than the base tile does. The third tile down, we also haven't seen. There is a base damage there as well, and uh, some nasty research. Uh, and another two sevens. Two sevens uh, on doing damage for explosions. Um, so there's, there's kind of an idea of what this game has to offer hidden behind the tiles. Everything else, you will have to find out for yourself. Um... So that's that. Thank you so much once again to Check Games Edition for sending me a copy of this so that I could actually stream this for you and, and show this to you ahead of its release in the US um, and in Canada. I hope that this has given you some information about it and that, uh, as I say, that you found this enjoyable. Um, just before I go, a couple of things. Uh, I would love it if you are watching this on Twitch right now, if you would follow me for a start. Uh, it helps to expand my community here and gives you a notification when some more solo play is going up. I do RPGs as well. I have a couple of those lined up. I do have a couple more publisher-provided games, one uh, one Kickstarter and one that has already completed its Kickstarter, but they're, they um, finished developing the Solitaire rules after it. Those are coming up down the line, but I also have some RPGs lined up. Um, I've got a couple of ideas of some other stuff I want to do. I'm still trying to find a way to see if I can play some very story-heavy uh, video games as well, because um, I would like to incorporate that into my channel too. We'll see how all of that goes. I've got plans. That's that's all I'm saying. Um, let's bring me, bring me back up again, and I'm also going to just put my socials back where they belong. Um, but yes, please do follow me here on Twitch. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, please head over to Twitch. Uh, it's right here, twitch.tv forward slash once upon a die, and hit that follow button. Uh, that would be great. If you would like to subscribe to me, that would be amazing. But uh, right, I'm just asking for follows right now uh, because, you know, expanding my community is, is important to me. I love being able to share this with all of you. If you're watching this on Twitch, head over to YouTube. It's in my link tree. linktr.ee forward slash once upon a die. My YouTube channel is there. Uh, if you head over there, then um, you will be able to see my videos that have been on Twitch previously. Uh, please subscribe to me on YouTube, hit the little notification bell, and if you're watching this on YouTube already, do that too. Again, gets me to expand my community, and if I can hit 100 subscribers, I can actually get myself a, um, a custom URL, uh, and that will make it so much easier to tell people that I have a YouTube, because right now it's one of these massive uh, alphanumeric um, addresses that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so I would really appreciate the support. Uh, you get notified whenever I put stuff up, and uh, you get to see a lot more Solitaire content. Um, I would also recommend that you check out my two fellow accounts. Uh, the first one I'm going to tell you about right now, uh, that is um, Into the Meepleverse. Uh, that's 
into the Meeple, it's M-E-E-P-L-E, for those of you who don't know the word, uh, Meepleverse, and that is run by Billy. Uh, it's a Twitch stream of board games, he plays a lot of really cool stuff, and uh, also a podcast with my friend Maggie. Uh, they do a podcast together, which is now running again, and they do some really, really good content. Um, also, uh, they are part of my group Discord, which is right here. This Discord channel is for myself, Billy, and Scott Moyle, who I'm going to talk about in just a second. Um, but also, while I'm saying podcasts, check out my podcast. It's been mostly dead for quite a while. I am writing episodes that are slightly different to my usual fare, but will keep me going for a little bit. Um, and I will be releasing some stuff on that before the end of the year. But I did do an interview with Rob Davio, uh, game designer of Pandemic Legacy uh, Seasons 1 and 2, but also Season 0. And I, did, I released that on October 23rd, which was the release date of Pandemic Legacy Season 0. I have my copy. I haven't opened it yet, but I'm really looking forward to playing it. But I got a really cool interview with Robin, so do check that out. Um, and there's some really cool episodes on my podcast, and you can hear what I started with when I first started doing board game media, and I will get back to uh, at some point in the not terribly distant future. Um, so that's all of that. And then my final thing, as I mentioned earlier, my friend Scott Moyle runs a ch uh, channel called Moyle's Meticulous Minis on Twitch. Uh, that's M-O-Y-L-E-S, Meticulous Minis. Uh, and he is a miniature painter. He paints miniatures and... Um, uh, is a very, very entertaining host while he does it. Uh, he's actually doing that right now, and the reason that I held off on um, uh, sort of introducing him is he is currently live, and I'm going to raid his channel uh, in just a minute with you guys so that uh, I can take you guys over there to go and enjoy what he does too and see if you like his work. Uh, and if you do, then please follow him too. Um, he is a very, very entertaining individual. He's a, uh, He and Billy and Maggie are all friends of mine from uh, when I used to work at Snakes and Lattes. And they are wonderful humans who run wonderful uh, Twitch channels. So please do enjoy their content. Uh, thank you very much in the meantime from me. Uh, I hope that you will engage with me, enjoy my work. Uh, and thank you so much for joining me today for this playthrough or playthroughs of uh, Under Falling Skies. Um, keep rolling those dice until the game is done. And I am going to, if I can find the raid button, which has disappeared... Uh, there we go. Raid channel. Uh, everybody who is with me right now. Oh, did he just not? Uh, I'm just going to see if he is still live. Yes, he is still live. We're raiding Scott Moyle in five, four, three, two, one. Raid! And that's that. Thank you, everybody, for watching my stream today. Take care. Bye for now.